A while back, I made a video called The Beginner's Guide to 3D Printing for Car Enthusiasts, and that video helped a lot of people get into 3D printing. But things have come a long way since then, so I wanted to make a sequel to that video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how I've upgraded to a new 3D printer, how I design and download parts, and why 3D printing is now easier than ever if you want to make your own car parts at home. So stay tuned. The first video that I made talked about my Creality Ender 3, and that was a great printer when it was first released. In fact, it was the most popular beginner printer on the market, but since then there have been so many advancements in 3D printer technology that now in comparison to new 3D printers, it kind of looks like a pile of garbage. There are so many options out there now as far as beginner and intermediate 3D printers, so first I wanted to briefly explain some of the options that went through my head when I was looking for an upgrade. I knew I wanted a Bamboo Lab printer from the get-go because they make some of the best budget-friendly options out there, and also I use Bamboo Lab printers at work, so I'm already familiar with the platform. The Bamboo A1 is one of the first options that I looked at. This is a similar spec to the Ender 3, but has more modern upgrades and better reliability. For a true beginner printer, this is a top contender. These are usually around $400 and have a fully automated calibration system compared to the Ender 3, which had none. The next one on the list is the Bamboo P1S. This printer is an enclosed Core XY printer and it's closer to an industrial level printer. This is better for more intermediate level printing and this one usually sells for around $700. It's much more reliable and allows you to print at much higher speeds with more accuracy. You can also get the P1P, which is the stripped down version of this printer without the trim for $600 so you can save a bit of money, but it's no longer enclosed, so you lose the temperature regulation and the filtration aspect. I ended up going with the P1S because it was on sale for Bamboo's anniversary sale, so I got it for $550, which is an absolute steal. So let's go over why I switched. The Ender 3 was a great beginner printer at the time, and it taught me a ton, but it's outdated now, slow and unreliable compared to new printers, and it can be a bit frustrating to say the least. The Bamboo Lab P1S is the next evolution in the game that makes the most sense. It's fast, reliable, and works right out of the box. I can spend less time fighting with the machine and more time actually making parts. When this printer first arrived, I was surprised at how put together it was. I only spent about 20 to 30 minutes doing minor assembly and prep, and then I was already running it. With the Ender 3, I pretty much had to build the entire thing piece by piece, so this was a nice change of pace. I was also shocked at how many self-checks and calibrations the P1S has. This printer has a full self-calibration that it runs before each print, and it takes about six minutes to do. I know that seems like a long time, but once you see how fast this printer is and how good the quality is, you'll understand why. One of the biggest changes is the slicer software. Before I was using Cura with the Ender, which worked and worked pretty well, but you had to dial in so many settings. Bamboo Studio, however, which comes with the P1S, is way more streamlined. It's basically set up for you already, and you can still go in and tweak everything if you want. I've noticed that most of their filament profiles are pretty spot on, and I usually have to make minimal changes to the settings. But on top of that, you can send your prints from your computer directly to the printer over Wi-Fi and watch the progress of your print from your computer or your phone so you can track it on the go. So if you do have a failed print, you can see that and stop it before it becomes a big problem. As far as filaments go, I pretty much only use PETG or PLA, but I know others use ABS and some composite filaments as well, which can add a lot more strength. PLA filaments are probably the most cost effective and the most common, and usually run about $15 to $30 for a one kilogram spool. PETG, however, is a little bit more expensive because it's more temperature resistant and a bit stronger, so these usually cost closer to $20 to $50 for a one kilogram spool. PETG is my go-to filament for pretty much all of my car parts that I print because I don't want to risk having my prints melt. Now let's talk about making your own designs. I use a free software called Fusion 360 to design my custom car parts. If you've never used CAD software before, it might look a little intimidating, but once you learn the basics, it's pretty easy to increase your skill level. My advice to get started is to just find something very simple in your home to model, like a cup, and try it out. I'm not going to go through the design process in this video because that would take way too long, but there are tons of other tutorials online that can help you learn how to do it. But knowing how to 3D model gives you so much freedom in 3D printing. For example, I can measure a bracket or clip that broke on my car, model it in Fusion, and then send it straight to the P1S to print. A couple of hours later, I've got a part that works just like the original, sometimes even better. But even if you decide that that's too complicated and you don't want to go through the process of learning how to model, that's okay because here's the best part. You don't even have to design anything yourself. There are websites like Thingiverse and Colts3D where people upload free and paid models for you. 
You can literally search for car accessories, trim clips, or even scale models and just download the file. Then you can drop it into Bamboo Studio, hit print, and that's it. If you're new to 3D printing, this is a great way to start because you can get cool results without having to design right away. And now you only have to learn one new skill at once. But now let's actually print something. All right, so first things first, we're gonna come on to Thingiverse here on the computer. And this is where I like to download a lot of my 3D print files. So you can see there are a ton of custom files that people download on here for free. So I'm gonna kind of go through here and just see if there's something that I want. Um, I have a pegboard in my garage and it really needs some new stuff on it. I really don't have anything on there. So this looks pretty good right here. I'm gonna click this. I could use a little tray holder for my pens. So I'm gonna click here, download files. And so after I download it, I'm just going to extract it into a folder onto my computer. And from here, now we can open up the Bamboo software. So this is the Bamboo software. You can see right here, we have the Bamboo Lab P1S. This is my printer here. You have your nozzle diameter and then your filament type. We're gonna switch this to generic. We're gonna be using PLA for this one. Uh, and then we're gonna select the quality here. So I'm probably just gonna do like standard here. So now I'm just gonna click up here to add and I'm gonna select my file. So there we go, this is what it looks like. So we're just gonna take a look, make sure that this is exactly what we want to print. Um, and then if you need to make measurements, you can click up here and you can kind of measure. So maybe if you just wanna make sure that your peg diameters or uh, peg distances are going to make sense for your pegboard, you can measure that make sure that those make sense. Um, but yeah, so this all looks good to me. So now at this point, we can start getting it ready to print. So all of these side menus have all of your specifications. So as far as strength, I'm probably gonna leave it at 15% infill and we'll probably leave it at grid pattern. Uh, I don't really think I need to change that. We'll go over to supports and then we'll leave it on tree supports and then we'll leave it on 30 degrees. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I think the only supports that are gonna be needed here are probably for these little peg inserts here. So we'll have some tree supports coming off to basically make sure that these are held up. So um, I'm gonna show you guys what that kind of looks like in a second here. And then others here, this will kind of give you like bed adhesion. Uh, that's gonna basically just make sure that this print sticks to the bed nicely, uh, that you don't have any lifting, anything like that. But besides that, I think everything looks pretty good. So now we can go over here to preview and this is gonna give us a look of what this print is going to look like once it's done. So this is what the tree support is actually gonna look like. So you got your brim at the bottom and then you have the tree that holds up this section of the print. Obviously because this print is at a 90 degree angle, you have nothing else supporting it. So there needs to be something that this print can kind of lay on, so that way it doesn't sag down, if that makes sense. So um, basically for that, you know, you just break those little trees off after the print is finished, and then you have a nice successful 90 degree print that doesn't have any sagging, anything like that. So that's how that works. Um, and then you have up here, you just slice the plate and that will tell you exactly how long this is gonna take. So preparation time, this is gonna be like your calibration, that kind of stuff. It's gonna take about six minutes and 16 seconds. And then model printing time is one hour and 13 minutes. So that brings the total time to one hour and 19 minutes. So not a very long print, uh, looks pretty good. And now at this point, I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're gonna go up here to print plate. It's gonna show us the preview, it's gonna show us the printer, it's gonna show us the time and how many grams of filament it's gonna use. And then we just select here, external. So we're using our external filament. That's the PLA we're using. And we do wanna select time-lapse because I wanna give you guys a time-lapse recording of this print. Auto bed leveling is on. That's again, one of the calibration steps that it's gonna use. And so now at this point, we are pretty much ready to go. That's all there is to it. So we're gonna send it to the printer and I'll show you guys exactly how that looks. So now this is what the screen looks like. So at this point, it's going to start its calibration. It's gonna show us all of its um, estimated finishing time and basically how far along the print is. It's gonna show us a live feed um, of the print. And you can also change some settings during the print if you want to. It'll show you your extruder uh, and bed temps all of that, it'll show you like the fan speed, you can turn on and off the lamp, 
And you can actually change the speed of the printer as well. So you can do silent mode. So if you're you know, working and you just want it to be quiet, it'll print slower. You can do standard. And you also have a sport mode and ludicrous. So sport mode prints at 133% speed. And then ludicrous is at, I think, 166% speed. That one is crazy. <laughs> so um, usually I just do standard. Uh, it's probably the best quality. Sport mode actually is really good quality as well. I haven't really noticed too, too much of a quality hit from that. But again, guys, I mean, this, this thing already prints really fast as it is. So I don't really think we need to bump it up too much. So here we are. The printer is about to start its calibration here. As you guys can see, this is the pegboard tray. So it's still heating up the uh, nozzle and it's going to, it's gonna purge out some of that old filament there. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna shoot out some of that old extruded um, filament out the back here. It's gonna leave kind of just, uh, we call this the poop chute. It's gonna leave some old filament in there and then you can just toss that in the trash. Just that way it's not using old filament. Then after it's done purging, it's going to wipe the nozzle off on this roller here, so that way it doesn't have any gunk on it. And then it's gonna start the calibration. <laughs> there it is. So it's vibrating the bed right now to do its calibration. So it starts off the first layer pretty slow, so that way it has good bed adhesion, and then it kicks up the speed after that. So now I just pop off the bed here and it's a flexible bed. So you just bend it and it pops it pretty much right off. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Really nicely done. Even the bottom just looks so nice. The quality of these prints is just outstanding. Moment of truth. There we go. So now I've got a nice little pen holder for my pegboard. Compared to when I first started, getting into 3D printing is so much easier now. The printers are more reliable, they're faster, they're easier to assemble, the software is so much more user-friendly, and the community has grown like crazy. But I won't lie to you either, there is a learning curve to this. When you first get started, you'll probably have questions like, what file type do I save this as? And what's the support structure? It can feel completely overwhelming, but for the most part, the Bamboo Lab printers are very user-friendly and walk you through a lot of the process. With your first prints, you'll want to follow some how-to videos. There are a ton of step-by-step -step videos on YouTube that show you how to set your parameters, how to download your file, and how to start your print so that way you don't have any weird issues. And once you get a hang of the basics, then you can start exploring the endless possibilities and settings. I have made countless accessories, mods, trim pieces, brackets, and other things for my cars over the years, but I have one example in particular that I wanted to tell you guys. This is from a few years ago, but when I had my old 240SX drift car, I had a fitting that broke that was discontinued, and it was a complete nightmare finding a replacement for it. I actually found a very similar fitting on a website called McMaster Car, where they sell lots of industrial materials for businesses, and I wasn't quite sure if it would work or not. This fitting specifically cost $60 for just this one little piece, so I was afraid to risk it. Well, McMaster has all of their 3D models online for free, so I ended up just downloading the file, 3D printing it, and installing it on my engine to make sure that it would fit, and sure enough, it was a direct replacement. 
So then I ordered it later that night and it fixed my problem. Whether you're printing replacement parts, custom mods, or even just tools to help you wrench on your car, 3D printing is one of the most useful skills to get into as a car guy. If it's something that you're interested in learning about, make sure to check the video description below because I linked some other videos from other channels that can help out with the modeling process and 3D printing process. These videos are gonna give you a much more in-depth walkthrough. So that's my update on 3D printing for cars for beginners. If you've been on the fence for a little while about getting into 3D printing, now is the best time to jump in. There's a lot of learning with these things, but it is definitely worth it. But let me know in the comments below if 3D printing is something that you're interested in. As always, if you enjoyed the content for today, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future content. I'll catch you guys next week. Later.